In this section, we'll go over the extrusion operations. With an object selected, press K, and this is the default menu you'll see. Uh, press Enter or OK at the bottom of the menu, and adjust the channel to R to start with. And let's draw a shape like this. Press K again. The menu will pop back up. If you want to avoid this menu keep popping back up, simply turn off this Confirm Actions button so that every time you press K, it will automatically be applied. So let's turn it off and press Enter. Now the shape we drew is cut out of the original geometry we are working on. If you press 0 on the numpad, you'll see from a different angle what just happened. And this wireframe object is actually the shape we drew. It's extruded. To the passing the boundaries of the main object and cutting through the shape that we sketched. In the left bottom corner you'll see the menu if you expand it. What's going on here? Now our default settings are difference mode which means whatever we draw here after it's converted into 3D geometry it will be removed from the main object which is this cube. And cut through option is selected. If I turn that off, this is what you'll see. Now, if you if you still adjust the extrusion length controlling these sliders, if you only want to remove a portion of this, hold the direction. And using the main controls, you can move this shape around, rotate it, uh, or scale it. So, now I'll go back to defaults because I made a quite a few changes here. The easiest way to do that is go to operator presets and restore operator defaults. So we'll be back to where we were. Now I'm going to turn off this confirm actions button again. And the next thing that you need to remember is that every time you left click into the 3D interface, a new operation will be starting, or at least that's how Sketch on Cloud interprets it. It assumes that you just started a new drawing. So let's go to the camera view. I'm just going to draw another shape like this. And I press K. Now that's also removed. But what if we wanted to actually add this? To do that, simply press Union. Now the cut through is automatically switched off because when you're working on union mode, you must have the remote control turned on. Press zero again on numpad. Let's look at it from the side view. And here's the object. There's a default extrusion length of 0 0.1 meters or 10 centimeters. Now these shading issues are happening because of guides of line. And the actual geometry and the wireframes are working. So let's turn that off since we'll be doing quite a few union operations. Again, this is the same as before. You can move these around, uh, rotate them. Oh, let's restore the defaults for now. And also you will see some new colors applied. Every new geometry comes with new material applied to the new sections. To make life easier later on when you want to Select only these parts and uh, maybe operate on them or uh, work on the colors or material or change it. Let's uh, draw a few more shapes. Press K. So as you can see, every time you press K, it applies the settings. If we change the extrusion length, now every time I draw a new shape, the extrusion will be repeated. You can also flip the extrusion. You can either slide this backwards or you can click flip. Sometimes this is easier without having to deal with the slider. Now, right next to flip, there's another slider. It's random, random extrusion length. Now, right now default is zero. That means there's no randomness applied. The reason for that is when you're rapidly drawing quick shapes like these, you can also draw multiple shapes all at once, by the way. Uh, 
and if you wanted their depth to be slightly different from each other, just increase the randomness. So let's say is, uh, let's make this 0 0.30. So now here's one, here's another, here's another, here's another, here's another. If you look at them from the side, you'll see that their heights are slightly different here. I could increase this to almost one and they will come out slightly different. As you can see, the uh, contrast between their length is now much bigger. So that's what that button does. And the next row of buttons are subdivisions. Let's say you draw a new shape. Let's go fancy. Press K. And let's increase the subdivision. Actually, let's turn this randomness off. So sub if you use the slider and in uh, increase the subdivisions above zero, this is what you'll get. There is a relative button right after subdivisions. Um, a slightly smaller extrusion mark. If I click that, and every time I increase or decrease the subdivisions, the object will taller or shorter. This button also affects the next row, twist and scale operations. Now let's turn that off and increase this back up. And the randomness here that uh, is across from the subdivisions actually affects the shape of the object. Just gives that messy look. It adds a bit of a noise to the geometry. Because uh, if you were going to make any such shape, let's say a uh, rustic country house or a tree log or something like that, uh, those shapes are hardly ever straight lines. So there's always a slight unevenness to them. Uh, this is one easy way of achieving that kind of look. And let's turn that off. Actually, let's make that zero because it also goes into action down there. So now twist. Again, twist uh, is just an angle you put there. Like if I put 90 degrees there, this is what you'll get. If I had relative one, there would be a 90 degrees rotation for each subdivision. So if you have that, then you need to actually reduce these, not 90, but maybe let's try and reduce the extrusion length because now these are per subdivision. Okay, and also when the relative option is on, the slider feels a bit more responsive. It's because this uh, angle value we are adding here is applied per slice. And it's the same with scale here. What scale does is this. It's all the tip up or down. So let's reset these. This was extrusion. We'll cover the other parts in other videos. Thank you for listening. See you next.